day is in charge of this wonderful um, catering uh, how do I say it? business and I refer to none other than Audrey Tank Boy who's uh, what I uh, value as a good friend and even more is that she's a previous bride. So welcome Audrey. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you for so having much. me Tita Rita. I, I I'm excited. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that you asked me to be here and maybe one of your first guests. Yes. In one of the, what are you drinking, by the way? <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, yes. A strawberry gin tonic. The, the strawberries are from Benguet. <laughs> to get them, huh? Yeah, I know. It's part of the farmers, diba? Right? There are many group initiatives. So I I joined. <laughs> yeah, um, in fact, we had a farmers market here in our uh, here in Makati just recently. But um, you know, it was uh, very nice that we're getting at least the deliverables and groceries and everything. But um, before anything else, I just wanted to, uh, to explain what this is all about. Sure. And, uh, and, I, and again, I'm really glad that you're here because um, let's face it, um, people and your many followers and all of those who love. Bisu, want to know what, what, what is happening. You know, we, uh, we have people also asking, not only clients or couples, but even the general public. So um, I know you're hands-on for the restaurant, but also mainly also for the catering. So um, most of my questions uh, coming from these uh, sectors are really centered around that. And that being said, uh, my first question is that were you in any way prepared for this situation? I don't think anyone could really prepare. I mean, if Bill Gates wrote, um, he had a whole TED talk about it in 2015, it would still be, you know, you wouldn't would even fathom the idea that something like this could really happen today. So I think no one would have been really prepared for such a catastrophe that happened to us. It's the scope, no? Like what you said, no one can really be prepared, but the scope of it and how it affected so many people. Yes, yes. Um, you, 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 you would plan for acts of God, <laughs> you know, because that's all in the contract. And you, you, you know that acts of God happens. The, the recent Ta'al um, explosion happened just in the beginning of the year. And, you know, yeah. that's something that you had to get through. And we also had Tagaytay events also at that time. And I said, oh my God, that was... That, that was also unprecedented. But you know that things like that really happen. But something like a virus that we're experiencing today is something unfathomable. Unfathom, I, I know. And then um, um, that being said, do you think the events industry is going to die? Because some people are bringing it out there. You know, um, the events industry for me, just as restaurant industry, is not going to die. It will resurface once again but then it would it would be at a slower pace i would see it at a slower pace this year i mean it, it was the events industry was really at a big boom you know and the events were getting bigger the events were getting um wilder you know in terms of decorations and all this and then i just see it suddenly just shutting down for a while you know um Going back to what really matters, maybe. Yeah. You know? Uh, um, because of this, and I, I totally agree with you, do you think that, uh, because as you said, nobody was prepared for something like this, mm -hmm. but there were some um, companies, or should I say businesses, that were pre installing technical apps, creating a crisis management team. Yes, yes. Going online, doing strategic planning. Did Bisu do anything like this? Well, um, of course, when it comes to really on-ground events, it's yeah. not something that is high-tech in terms of digital, you know? 
you it's really still service intensive at the end of the day siguro the most digital you can get would be digitally doing wedding fairs or selling online to brides who come from other countries or doing Skype calls for for meetings but that's as much as we can do right i mean events is so personal it's very social yeah. um so i think that alone cannot be disrupted alone by technology. The need for, you know, being with each other, being together, and really experiencing, experiencing things face-to-face. Because that leads me to the next uh, question, which is like, out of so many um, events or caterings that you do, uh, and I know you do not only socials, you don't only do birthdays and anniversaries, but also corporate. Did you have a yes. lot of cancellations or postponements? So, we had cancellations for corporate events. And usually at the start of the year or towards the summer, that's when we have kickoff events for corporate clients, especially for in the big convention centers like in SMX. And yeah. we, we usually look forward to those large occasions because they really uh, helped us in our top line, but everything was just canceled like that. However, for socials, we saw that things were not canceled, but just postponed. Postponed. You know, so yeah. So the, the social events remain as yeah. is, but it was the corporate events that were canceled. Um, so what was your policy if people canceled? They forfeited their deposit? Well, if they... Um, well, what, the, the corporate events that we booked were still on the contract stage. Okay. So it was just let go. You okay. know, so there wasn't any issues on our end with return policies, etc. But we had um, brides who have already paid. In fact, I had um, an event coming uh, two days before the lockdown and they already backed out and already fully paid, actually. Um, so we urged them to just do a postponement. Okay. And okay. so the postponements are, aren't even for, the 20, for 2020. All postponements were already moved to 2021, 2022. Okay. So that's how uncertain the time is today. And um, their deposit was honored, correct? Their deposits are with us still. Yes, it's yeah. applicable for the, move, the yeah, change yeah. of date. Definitely, definitely. And actually, um, I'm trying to come out with packages for them. You know, um, not to move prices at the same time, maybe see how I can also come up with better packages for them. Oh, that's very nice because I, I, that would be so helpful for them um, um, in the sense that you're giving them, you're giving them more options and yes. not just, yeah. So what also, even... What I, what I noticed was the decrease in, um, in guests. So if they usually started booking us for 150 to 200 guests, we're getting decreases in number of guests. Okay. And yeah, so instead of 150, they're focusing now on just maybe 50. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Is and this a general trend? It, it, it is a trend that has already started um, in the start of March. People were downsizing their weddings. They were downsizing okay. the experience as well. Uh, but so the way I see it, uh, actually, Tita Rita, the way I see it is people are moving into more intimate um, events, but then they're not scrimping on the experience and they're looking more for higher end um, menus, okay. you know, since it's an intimate experience. Do I understand it to mean that because their guest list has, um, what has gone down, yes. they your budget will go into a higher menu because it's more intimate um they would go for plated menus instead of buffets for example and then they would often get a, a better package also yes that's true which leads me to the number one question i'm often asked uh, for venues and caterers yes how do they lay their fears regarding social distancing i mean everyone's saying that instead of 10 people in a table they're going to be five or four Give me your take on this. Well, I feel that the 
what's important is the people who are on the table know each other and they know where everyone comes from. So it's very intimate. No? They're family members and they know where each, uh, they, they trust each other. They trust that they, they are following the correct hygienic practices and all that. So, of course, it, it's better to have distance. So if it's a table for 10, I would recommend to shrink it down to six. And that yeah. would be very helpful. And um, what are you doing to allay the fears of your clients? Yes. Uh, yes, we're actually buying into new equipment right now. Um, the equipment we're buying is for us to make sure that all our utensils, all our plates are heated. No, before using. And then if we're doing buffet, we're recommending that the buffet is turned the other way around and it's managed for now. You know, so that's more applicable for corporate packages. But for weddings, I do recommend um, plated service so that everyone gets their, their plates individually. Okay. Um, plated service, I totally get that. But would you also recommend doing like family style? No, no, I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't expose really food right in the middle. I would even rather prefer to use shaping dishes because they maintain a certain temperature, um, a okay. certain heating temperature. So if you use shaping dishes, it, it's even more hygienic actually than putting family style food right in the center where people are conversing. Yeah. And um, your staff, of course, who take the necessary safety. Yeah, they would look different. <laughs> yeah. We won't recognize them anymore because they'll have face shields and everything. Yes, they should. And even everything at the back is more sterilized. Um, how the people are moving also. Everyone ha would have their own distance and okay. stickers actually to make sure that they, they keep their distance. So the way it's going to be done is just entirely different today. Okay. But uh, that being said, would you, um, because, you know, you, you would want to have less contact. So does that mean you'll take less events on a per-day basis? Actually, how I see it, and I told my team, uh, we would st still, you know, I feel that there would be more events, but just smaller, you know. Okay. So I haven't really talked about um, or decided how many we can just do. Because yeah. I think um, we're pretty much flexible on that on that end. Um, we okay. can do, I mean, if we can do big before, now it's just managing it in a micro way. What I see, though, um, in terms of venues would be intimate venues um, where okay. they, they, a small group of people are still free to go to a garden, for example, you know, or to walk around and not just be limited to a very so small space. You know, okay. so uh, I, I'm foreseeing that. In fact, I just booked two Baguio events last week for oh. December. Yeah. And um, so I, I, I also foresee out-of-town weddings taking place, you know. Okay. But on a smaller scale, like what you said. Ironically, I booked 150 guests. So I don't know if, what they're thinking. <laughs> so, so both are also on 150 guests. And I think we, as, as in the events team, know we're very cautious. But then at the end of the day, there are people who are still um, gung-ho about all when ECQ lifts. And they feel that things will go back to normal by then. I like that. That's a very positive attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do they reach you? How do they contact you? The usual way? Yes, uh, well, we're, we're on in, all my, my wholesale team is still on. Okay. So you can contact Gemma <laughs> or, you know, um, you can go online and our number is right there. Gemma's number is right there. Uh, can, I, can I give it to you here right now? So if anyone watching, you can get mine. It's 0917-541-2646 or Audrey at bizugroup.com with an E. And yeah. We're on we're online. We're on Facebook. So if you go to the Bizu Catering Studio on Facebook, there's someone that's going to be answering your query right away, as in on the dot the whole day. So we're still very much manning manning the business. That that is so nice to know that you're you know really out there and yes. Face it, um, Bizu is such a big word already for catering, and I know you have a lot of followers. So 
Um, the next question I'd like to ask you is that um, it's very reassuring. I'm sure that uh, you have already your uh, supply chain, your deliverables and everything. Yes, yes. Yeah, getting the meat and safe meat. It's improved. It's improved. So, you know, there's a lot of... So our same suppliers are already there. They're back. And okay. they, they supply us the same food, the same meats, the same vegetables, the same fish. They're about to deliver, right? And they deliver directly to our commissary. Our commissary now is really locked in. So we're only allowing the same people who've been working with us from, from day one, uh, two days after the lockdown. So they're there. We're on a lockdown. Not everyone is allowed to come into the commissary. And so we're operating that way. Uh, what I, I would like to share, though, that what we were able to do was still bring celebrations to people's homes during the GC, or during the ECQ. So oh, wow. we brought... Deliver. Yeah, so when we delivered more family meals and we oh. delivered birthday we delivered the birthday parties, you know, inside homes. And I mean and so because when you talk think about Bizu, it's really about celebration, right? It's all our cakes, our macarons. It just brings a lot of joy. And I remember in the beginning of ECQ, two weeks into it, everyone was just feeling down. Everyone was just feeling gloomy. You know, so when we and then we talked about joy. We talked about celebration. We talked about you can still celebrate your child's birthday. And I believe that we stuck it through um, the whole ECQ period. And we still wanted to be part of people's milestones and celebrations, no matter how small. I really like the fact that, uh, you know, now that you mentioned deliveries and everything. So do you think that um, this is something you'll pursue a lot more family I know it's intimate, but that's really intimate. I mean, you're talking about 20 people, 30 people gathering? I'm talking about five people gathering. I'm talking about eight people gathering. So, I mean, that's how much a standard people are in a household. So they would get our, our meals. And I would usually sell party trays above 10 persons, but I, I halved it and trimmed it down just to accommodate. So. You know, it's smaller, more, you know, more intimate, more fun. Is this on your website? Yes, it is. And you can buy it also online um, through e-commerce. So you can do the whole transaction online. Okay, everybody, watch out for that because it's something different. I, I really love the fact that if you're tired of eating, you say meals or, or whatever, Meals 2 is out there and they're willing to deliver. They can't yes. Eat. Yes. Absolutely. Do you have a scope of delivery only within Metro Manila? Well, only within Metro Manila right now. Okay. And that, uh, for sure, your wonderful pastries are included, right? Yes. Yes, definitely. And the strawberry shortcake is also included. And it is there. It is there. Um, with that being said, um, how do you protect or look after your people? Because you, you do maintain a big service staff. Yes. Actually, our service staff isn't working right now, unfortunately, because there's no demand for face-to-face um, -face service or real-time service. So really, the only thing operating right now is our kitchen and yeah. our dispatch logistics team. And then our sales team is also work from home. So we really had to adapt quickly. And unfortunately, yes, a lot of people are displaced in jobs because of the, the scenario. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's very sad, um, which leads me to ask, are you uh, collaborating or um, are you out there talking to government agencies like the Department of Health? Are, they're regulating uh, uh, food service, right? Yes. Well, right now, I think there's an events community um, arising headed by, yeah. I think, Robert Blancaflor. And so we all have to be, and we should be a part of it, you know, to raise our voices also to hear us. But at the same time, there is a, just the right time. I think there's the right time for events, right time for everything also us. We have to ensure the safety of everyone as well. So there's a lot of things that we have to lobby about. We have to lobby also for our protection, um, for our for our people, for freelancers, and the, because that's where we really thrive in, and a lot of people um, rely on 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 weekend gigs, right? So, yeah. but, uh, we had a wonderful time. 
talking to none other than Ms. Audrey Tangkuoy of BC Catering. So Audrey, I'd just like to invite you for a short message to all your followers out there. My followers, do I have followers? Uh, well, <laughs> well, I, I just want to share and give messages of hope, joy, and love. And I think those are the three things that we all need today. And it started when ECQ happened in the very beginning where we all now searched for hope. And then it emerged into joy where we found the joys in everything no, that we had or the situation that we were in. But I guess at the end of the day, love prevails. Love is the reason why we celebrate life. And love is the reason why life is more meaningful. And that's why I think the, age, the, the events industry is here to stay, mostly because there's so much love around and there's a lot of things to celebrate within life. I really love your positive spirit. And I know um, we've been using Love Prevails and I'm just so glad that we're both on the right track on this. On this. And it's just very positive, you know. Um, it's not Yes, hope. yes, we have to keep that up. Yes. So we're looking forward to better times and you're just the right person to communicate that. Audrey, cheers to you. Thank and you. Thank, thank you. you. I'll, I'll drink this all up for all of us. <laughs> <Much sugar. laughs> I know. <laughs> right.